So they've now given us the full HD reveal of Warcry Nightmare Quest, pitching the deranged Feshi to courts against the shiny, shiny Stormcast. They've also revealed a brand new roadmap for the rest of the year, so we know approximately what we're going to be getting. And in this video, I'll be piecing together all the information from the live feed from Warhammer Fest with the article they've published today. Let's check it out. So Warcry Nightmare Quest is the fourth and final large-scale Warcry box announced for this season. We're told not everyone who enters the deadly forest of the Narwood does so for treasure. Some fight instead for honour and destiny. Whether driven by divine prophecy or supernatural mania. The box set presents us with two warbands with very different opinions of virtue and hygiene. They are a Stormcast warband named the Questor Soulsworn and a Flesh Eater Quartz warband named the Royal Beast Flayers. The Questor Soulsworn are unique among the Stormcast Eternals, existing outside of the traditional chamber structure. Each Soulsworn is selected by Sigmar himself to join the ranks of the Questors giving them a chance to flex their muscles and express their heroic virtues to the fullest in the most dangerous missions. These poissant paladins are usually solo agents, wandering the realms to carry out the God King's will according to visions and omens. On occasion, however, they will gather as a warband to undertake a particularly perilous task, such as cutting to the heart of the Ravening Ruin to keep the secrets of Talaxis from falling into the wrong hands. And here we have the fantastic models. So top we have one of the errant questors and these will make up the majority of your warband. They are led by a questor prime holding up that lantern there. A lantern which holds a distant star inside it. And is also how the questor prime selects his quest, accepting a lantern that interests him. Moving on, we see the leader of this warband, the Soul Sworn Knight Relictor. These warrior clerics are the guardians of the sepulchral temple of ages, with their key role being ensuring that they protect the souls of the Stormcast to ensure they can return to Azir for reforging. Below, you'll see another errant questor, and if I just scroll along, two more, and as you can see, they, they kind of ooze individual personality, as suits the background of this warband. And as we did see with some of the leaked pictures, it's worth noting that they do share bodies, so there's a little bit of limitation in the variety you can get with this warband. And it does match the way that a number of the models were put together from the Dominion box set. These shiny and gallant warriors must contend with the royal beast flayers. These coteries of cannibal courtiers act as gamekeepers for their vampiric kings, stalking terrible beasts or innocent bystanders, I mean, who's counting? that threaten their noble kingdom. They employ grotesque offal hounds to track their supposed quarry to return in glory with bloody pelts and trophies. This particular warband are out to wreck the Realm Shaper engines of the Narwood, believing them to be nests of horrid draconic magic, and they'll unleash a geomantic catastrophe if they succeed. So first up we have the vampire that's leading them, known as the Royal Flame Master. <laughs> a fantastically disturbing miniature, which does come with two weapon options and two head options, as we were told in the live preview. These flame masters are usually common ghouls who have been elevated to the level of vampire after sucking the blood of their vampiric masters. Slightly frowned upon by the ghoul purists in their warbands. Alongside him, hunches a beast slayer baron. They've gained a lot of strength and power after a first major kill and appears to be wearing something that looks a bit like a bear. Next we have the most bizarre item in the entire box, we have Offal Hounds, which is a brilliant name. Uh, these creepy ape dogs also have a gruesome lore behind them, where if a ghoul is caught stealing or doing something disrespectful to his lord, they are chucked into a pit full of offal bones and dastardly magics. Over time they dissolve into one of these things, believing themselves to be a hound that's serving their master and turning into something that looks a bit like one. It reminds me of the creepy creature from the box in uh, Creep show, I think it was. Next we have a couple more standard ghouls. These two on the left are known as ghoul trackers. They represent the local peasantry following their lord liege into battle. They have a little knowledge of the land and they're something that they can sacrifice. Next to them wearing the bone hat is one of the ghoul gore squires. They're upstanding nobles with prestige who've decided to come along for this hunt and have aspirations to perhaps become something more by taking something big down. And in the next picture you can see a couple more of those standing upright and another one of the little ghoul trackers below. As ever, the new box contains a stack of girish terrain, including an overgrown and mysterious Realm Shaker engine from the Eye of Chotek, which can sunder the ground at the command of anyone who controls it. It's a great looking mini and I wasn't even sure it was going to be released in this box, I thought it might be released separately. And it's worth noting, if you did pick up the Heart of Gur box, it does look like you're pretty much getting just the same two standard Narlokes alongside this, with the scatter terrain, and those are three sprues that we've had in every single box so far. Although in Sundered Fate and Blood Hunt, they did add in sprues which changed them up a bit. In addition to this, you're getting cards to add to your decks, including one which mixes this scenery up with the original Heart of Gur box set. 
We can also see a blurry description of what the reactions for the warbands will be, and I think the beast flayers get to cause some damage when somebody disengages near to them. And it looks like the Soul Sworn will get to do a bonus move or attack when one of their friendly fighters carks it. Nightmare Quest also contains the book Might and Madness, which is packed full of details, including background information, rules for both warbands, quests for your single-minded zealots, both golden and grisly, and a cool cooperative campaign, much as we've seen in previous tomes. As ever, they'll also be getting rules for Age of Sigmar, and perhaps most excitingly, we've got a roadmap for 2023-24. Showing that we're not going to continue to get these big boxes, I was wondering if we'd get a Catacombs 2 type spin-off or head to a new location. But instead, next we are going to get a starter set in the summer, and it's reasonable to assume this is the Soul Black Gravelords vs Stormcast box set that we've seen leaked online followed by eight new warbands before this season wraps up. In autumn we'll get four new warbands which are Order versus Destruction, two new warbands in winter which will be Order versus Death, and then something mysterious in springtime next year. So what do you think? Are you going to be picking this one up? Let me know in the comments. I'll be doing a full unboxing and review as I've done for this, some of the other boxes. If you're interested in more stuff from Warhammer Festa, you can check out my other videos here when they're done. And for something random from the YouTube algorithm down here, just click there. Cheers for watching.